Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Well, it is currently 2.54 on Tuesday, and this is Monday night's vlog. I went to bed really early last night and slept all through the night instead of getting up and vlogging. I got a really good night's sleep. I almost think I slept too much, honestly. Um, when Alex got up this morning to leave for work, I had to move my car, and so I was kind of up at that point. It was like seven something in the morning. So I came downstairs and um, I had a bite of a crumble cookie and a big glass of water. And then I sat on the front porch and I read all the three prefaces and part of the, the intro to Codependent No More, which I have not read in a long time. And I had pulled it out the other day and so I was like, you know what? I haven't read Codependent No More in such a long time. And I always tell people when I recommend it to people like in my personal life, I'm always like, this book helped me just as much as my basic recovery text did. I love the book Codependent No More by Valerie Beatty. And I don't know why I'm not a lover sometimes of self-help books. You would think that I would be. It, it takes a certain kind of self-help book. And I think that it depends on how as um, a reader I am spoken to as an audience, if that makes sense. It's hot in this car. Today would have been a good day to go to the pool. It's like kind of cloudy outside, but real nice. And it's 80 degrees. It would have been a good day to go to the pool, but I might go to the pool for a swim um, quickly before I pick up Tanya Jean to go to our meeting tonight. But anyway, oh, um, because when I look at the books, like the self-help books that have really helped me a lot personally, it's like the Melody Beatty books. And then, um, I just want to say, I think that like when you're turning into going somewhere, whether it's a parking spot or Starbucks like me right now, or, you know, what, wherever you're going and like trying to change lanes or something like that. And somebody else sees what you're trying to do. Why not just be the nicer person and just let them do it? Like, I was just like turning in to go to Starbucks and this girl in front of me, she saw that I was like way ahead of her and she zoomed and turned in. I mean, not that it really matters, but I just never understand that with people, you know? Welcome to Starbucks. What can I get started for you? Could I please get a venti iced blonde Americano with an extra shot and two Splenda? Okay, anything else? No, Josh, that's it. All right, we'll see you. All right, thank you. Um, I don't know why that stuff bothers me. It's like basic stuff that like my parents taught me when I was growing up. Like my dad always taught me like you let people out of an elevator before you get into it. You know, just basic manner stuff, you know? Um, you hold open the door for people if you're walking out and let them walk in or, you know, whatever, vice versa. And I just sometimes don't feel like we live in a very considerate society anymore. Anyway, enough complaints about that. But with the, like, the self-help books, it takes a certain, um, like, language that they kind of speak and how they speak to their author or their, their audience. Like, I feel like a lot of self-help books come across as very, like, factual, you know? Very just like textbook kind of stuff. I have to go to the bank, which is down there, and between down here and down there is like major construction, and then I'm, and I'm like, oh well, I'm vlogging, so I guess it doesn't matter if I get stuck in that major construction, right? Um, but I have to go to the bank down there, so. But um, Melody Beatty's books are just beautiful. They're absolutely beautifully written, and. Um, so anyway, like it was interesting because, so it's uh, 
the book came out, well shoot, I don't remember, but I read the five year preface, because that was the anniversary, the 10 year and the, like the 20 year maybe? I feel like there's a 20 year preface of it coming out and then I started reading the, um, the introduction, which is where she basically introduces the idea of codependency and what it is. And um, she talks about like her experience of being in recovery and how she was in charge of like family programs at um, a treatment facility in Minnesota, which I believe to be, um, what did they get? It's like a purplish drink. What did she get, I wonder? I believe that she worked at Hazleton, but I could be wrong. How are you? Hi, that's one of my favorite names ever. Do I know you? No. You look so fa huh? You look so familiar to me, um, but I can't really see because of the mask. But Lucy, it's nice to meet you. Um, I may have to use points. Well, actually, it says I don't. I thought I didn't have enough money on here, but it's showing that, I don't know. It's, yeah, sure, let's just use the points today. Well, welcome aboard. Do you know why your parents named you Lucy? No idea. I think it actually might have been an old family thing. I think it was, my full name is Lucy. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think she there are no Lucille's your age, I bet, are there? I, I love that. I love that. Well, congratulations on uh, starting at Starbucks. Thank are you excited to be the barista of the world? Thank you. Have a good one, Lucy. It was nice meeting you. I was going to read the joke, which is, why couldn't a flower ride its uh, bike? And the answer is because its petals were uh, had fallen off. She was so sweet. I think that is so adorable that you would name a baby today. I mean, when people are like, well, it wasn't like she was born today. Okay, she's like 18. So, uh, <laughs> that might still in my today's time. To name a baby Lucille. I love that. I think that is so cool. I did a whole video on my Peter Does Stuff channel yesterday about names, in case you didn't see it. And today on my Peter Does Stuff channel, if I have time, well, I'm gonna have time because it's gonna be part of my vlog, I'm going to do a um, bath and box, <laughs> bath and box, bath and body works, Halloween candle haul because I heard that the new Halloween candles are out. So while I'm vlogging, I'm gonna go to Bath and Body Works and I'm doing a load of laundry. So anyway, I stayed outside and I read Codependent No More for like an hour. I forgot how much I love this book. It's just, it's so beautifully written and I'm just like, if you read self-help and motivational books, like you know when you read them and you're like, oh my God, this is me, 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 me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and um, and I love that it's a solution-oriented um, book. Like one of the things that she says in there that I love is that this woman said to her, I may not have been able, like when she, she's talking about like what's changed in all the years since it came out. And she was like talking about a message, messages that she gets from people. And she said this one woman was like, you know, I've been, um, cause mostly it's about codependence in relation to alcoholics and addicts. And if you had an alcoholic and an addict in your life, and it talks a lot about Al-Anon, which is a sister program for people who are affected by alcoholics, friends and family members mostly. But she goes in there and she's sharing this one story about this woman who said to her, I didn't have enough money for, ther for uh, sessions upon sessions of therapy or years upon years of therapy, but I sure didn't have enough money to buy a book. And I think it's so true, you know, it's like, um, I feel like I've met so many people that are like, well, I can't afford to go to therapy. And, and that is true, but you could go and buy a book at a used bookstore. I mean, my my codependent no more, 
that I got was probably $4.99 at half price books. You could probably get it on a used book site online, if not at a library for free, you know? So that's what I did this morning. I read that for a long time and was texting with my cousin a little bit. I guess the traffic this way isn't that bad anymore. Now it's the other way. Um, and then I was like, well, I'm gonna lay back for just a little bit, lay down for a little bit longer. And that turned into like three hours longer. So, yeah. And then I took the dogs out and I did some stuff around the house and I was I kept on thinking, oh, I've gotta get my vlog up, I've gotta get my vlog up, I've gotta get my vlog up. But then I realized, well, I haven't done my vlog yet today to get up, so. Um, I don't have to get it up just yet. <laughs> I have to go film it first. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, go to the bank right now and then I'm gonna go to Bath and Body Works and then I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna do well, I've got a review video. I'm doing a favorites video today, a summer favorites video. And then I'm gonna do, um, uh, this, a Peter, uh, well, this video on Peter Does Stuff, my, um, candle videos. If I end up buying anything, which I can't imagine I won't. And then, let's, my blog, Peter Does Stuff, Peter Reviews. Oh, I'll do a Peterisms video. And then um, a drama video, which I already know what I'm doing for my drama video today. I was gonna maybe make two of them, but I don't know, I'll probably just make one because I won't have tons of time because I start getting ready in exactly three hours and 40 minutes. So we are counting down the time as we speak to the time to start getting ready. So I can be ready to pick up Tanya Jean by 7.10 so I can leave and get her right on time. We have a home group meeting after our home group tonight, which means like, so not everybody that goes to my home group identifies this as their home group, if that makes sense. Like, um, everybody that's in recovery, well, not everybody that's in recovery has a home group. You're supposed to have a home group. That's what's recommended or suggested, but you don't have to have a home group. So, um, I would say at my home group, it's a lot of people that this is their home group. I would say more than half. Um, so we have kind of like, I don't love the, the word business meeting for that, but this is it's basically a business meeting where we vote on things and, um, decide on, you know, things just to do everything from just random stuff, you know, or things that are brought down to us from um, uh, higher up, you know, organizations within 12-step program that <laughs> does not govern, if that makes sense. I'll explain it to you in a second. I'm almost at the bank. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. The guy at the um, bank was so nice. He kind of looked at me like, <laughs> he, I asked him, I said, can I get one of those books too? He just kind of looked at me and um, he was so nice about it. Cause I said, you know, like one of those books. I said, I'm kind of real old school. I don't know why I couldn't think of checking ledger, but I said those books, you know, where you like write down, like he goes, oh, I know what you're, he doesn't say checking ledger. He goes, I know what you're talking about. And he started kind of laughing. But anyway, um, not, I mean, not really, but he was, he was so nice and, um, I don't think anybody asks for these checking ledgers anymore. I think I'm the only person that uses them in the entire world. I still like balance my check. My husband laughs so hard about this. So my checking ledger was actually, I was like out of space and had gone onto like the back page, like or the last page, which if you still use them, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's not actually a page, it's like an extra, like it's like the back of the, the inside of the back of the book. And then I like went up and like, I mean, it was so bad. I was so out of space that yesterday I like, um, what do you call it? Um, I was, uh, I printed off a sheet 
like a spreadsheet, you know, kind of thing with columns on it so that I could use that for my checkbook because I have to have it, you know what I mean? And um, so I was like, okay, I've got to make sure that I get these when I go to the bank next. So I did. But anyway, yeah, I still balance my um, checkbook. I like add up all of my receipts um, for my debit card, anything that I spend on my debit card. Um, like, and every, I know everybody's like, well, that's online, blah, 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 blah whatever. Okay, but there, you always have pending things, or, like, I'm still a check writer, so if you write checks, you can, might have checks out and things like that, right? So, it's never an exact number. The other thing is this, is that I round up, okay? So, like, when I'm adding my receipts together, if a receipt is, like, 12, you know, or let's say eleven fifty-two. I'll add, I'll round it up to twelve. That's twelve dollars, you know. Or if it's like nineteen uh, one, even I'll round it up to twenty dollars. Um, because my dad taught me to do that when I was a lot younger, so that you never overdraw on your account. So that's one of the things I've done ever since. So I probably every time I add up my receipts, I probably pad my account easily by anywhere from three to ten dollars. And then, like, every five years I go in and I pay myself because I typically, like, I can see after I've paid my bills for the month and stuff, I can see, like, online then what's the difference between that. And if it's, like, greatly different, like, several thousand dollars, then I'll pay myself, like, a thousand dollars towards my savings account and still be safe because I'm still padding stuff, right? So, um, but anyway, I still use a checking ledger, like, I'm really adamant about making sure that everything's in there, um, whatnot. Plus, kind of, like, writing it down for me, always, like, then I know, like, what I've done or whatever. But anyway, talking about the business side of a 12-step program, I don't know why people always seem to find this very interesting. I do think that it would be a greater way for the world to work, although, um, it... <laughs> I said, this, this area in here, I don't know why this freaks me out so much, but it's like a, a water something, a water, I don't know, but it's got these long tanks, and it reminds me of that movie Piranha, if you've ever seen that movie from back in the day. I think it's, you can watch it right now for free on something. But anyway, so the way that a 12-step 12 12 step program works, okay, basic, the basic level is this, is that you have a home group. Okay, if your meeting is a group, there's a difference between a meeting and a group. There are meetings that are not groups. A meeting can be a meeting and not a group. And what that means is it has no voting factors. Um, it has no, like, it doesn't have any appointed positions and things like that. You don't have a business meeting. It's just a meeting, right? Like, the two o'clock meeting at such and such place. It can just be a meeting. And then there are meetings that are groups, and a lot of meetings are groups, which means that it can be a home group for people, a meeting that you make a commitment to come to on a regular basis. You're gonna be of service at that meeting, that you're going to carry the philosophy of that meeting, that you're going to, um, you know, come every week, and you're gonna come to the business meetings and be an active member in that group, right? So that's what, uh, being in a home group means. Um, and it's just good because then you get to know the same people. Like, I've known the same people that have gone to my same home group for 20 plus years at this point. You know what I mean? That I've seen them every Tuesday night with the exceptions of the few that I don't go to throughout the year. So, not like I don't see them at other meetings, but I mean, I, I know I'm going to see them there, right? And then, like, if you don't go for a while, like, when I didn't go for four years and I came back, like, that was the meeting that I was terrified to come back to. And people were so welcoming of me, and they were so nice, and they were like... So, there, my, so my um, home group also has a literature group that's kind of like um, in conjunction with it. I don't go to that literature group. I used to back in the day, but I don't anymore. And then it has um, a speaker meeting that is also in conjunction with it that I used to, it's on Sunday nights. I used to go to it um, back in the day. I didn't, I, I didn't go every Sunday, but I would go a lot. And every once in a while, like Tony and I will go, you know, whatever, but, um, so that's on Sunday nights. And so this is like the meeting meeting with it. And um, so that's what a home group is. And then within the home group, 
there are positions that you vote on, and there's positions like secretary, um, like you have a chairperson. The chairperson is not really like a voted on position; it's more of like a volunteered position. Um, and usually, a chairperson will chair for a period of time, like a week or a month or a year, and then you have hosts that like welcome people in the door when they come in the door. Um, not every meeting has that. There's a lot of positions that a lot of meetings don't. Like we have a coffee person, because um, we have big coffee things at our meeting, but like a lot of people don't have that. Um, back in the day when you could smoke in meetings, there were people that would, you know, clean up ashtrays and clean coffee. We would have actual coffee mugs. Your job was at the end to clean the coffee mugs and at the beginning to like put out the coffee mugs and the ashtrays for people. Um, so, and then we rent the space where we have a meeting. So like, depends on where you go. That's something that you work out with the place. Like our meetings in a church. Um, so it's just, it's a certain amount of money. And then to rent it every month, the space. And then, um, from the donations that we take every week, because we're fully self-supporting, we pay for our own rent. So like we don't, we don't, like somebody doesn't just say here, you can use this place for free. Um, and that even goes with like, um, what do you call it? Clubhouses, like recovery clubhouses and stuff like that. They pay the clubhouse rent to host a meeting there and stuff like that so that the, the clubhouse can be fully self-supporting. So within that, there are two different, um, I don't really know how to explain this. There are two different voting bodies within um, the 12 step group that I go to. There's one group that's more on like a state level. And then there's another group that's more on like a district level. And the district level one They like, so like there'll be a, okay, they take, they'll bring issues to us from up above, like it's called, it's called something. And then they'll say, okay, like we're deciding to change this and this in the book, or we're, we're putting this up. Like somebody will recommend that we change a line in the book. Okay. It can be like, it can, it can seriously be like this, that somebody will suggest that we change a line in the book. Okay. And then we have to vote. It comes down to each group on, through this person, okay, on whether or not we are open to discussing changing that line. Not just to change it, but are we open to discussing changing that line? This was a big year, a big deal uh, a couple years ago because um, one of the things that was changed was, which makes sense, was the approach of social media through all of this. And, um, what's appropriate to post and not post and things like that. Um, which although people guess is why I never say the 12 step program that I'm part of. I always say my recovery meetings or my 12 step meetings. I mean, I never say that like in my real life, just so you know, if you're somebody and you're the children and your children know Marjorie, just in case you're somebody that's sober as well. And you think it's like weird language that I use. It is weird language that I use. I wouldn't say that. I would say my blank blank meetings. You know what I'm talking about. But like, so it's a violation of traditions and I've talked to my sponsor. I've actually talked to my last, this sponsor and my last sponsor about talking about it online. And they both said, it's fine as long as you don't say the program that you're part of. And I think I've maybe slipped like one time. Tanya said it in a, in a group and I said, or in a, a video and I said something and she said, um, well, this is my sobriety so I can, I can breach my own sobriety if I want to, which is true. So it's partly because of that, and it's partly also because I am not a representative of the program. I'm just a member. I'm not. I'm not representative of it in any way whatsoever. Um, so, and it's also part of our traditions, which are not really our rules. Our traditions are kind of the things that we abide by to keep um, our program in order. So anyway. 
So they'll bring something to us and then we'll vote on it in a, like a business meeting like we're having tonight. We'll vote on it and um, then they'll take that decision higher up, if that makes sense. But then we also have smaller things like, you know, it could be something as simple as like, are we gonna continue to have decaf and caffeinated coffee? You know, <laughs> like that kind of thing. I'm trying to think of something that's come up because sometimes it's real silly stuff. Um, but like, but you you think it's silly and Tony and I get a kick out of it, but at the same time, it's like, it's real serious, you know? a, uh, what is that called? Air balloon? Air balloon. One of those things Alex wants to go in. It's up here at Connor Prairie. They go up and then they go down. I think they're on a cord. I don't even think it could. Yeah, it's on a cord. I can see the cord. It doesn't go. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it from here. It doesn't even go all the way up. Can you see it? Around the world in 80 days. What was that balloon? I think I'd be real scared in that thing. I don't know if I could do it. Up, up and away in my beautiful, my beautiful balloon. Sometimes this stuff that we vote on is really serious too, you know? Um, uh, we have a couple serious things to vote on tonight, so. And, just, and then like, you know, sometimes the meetings are just to vote in, um, new people, like to vote in a new secretary or, you know, for these other positions. If um, So we have monthly meetings and this is our meeting tonight. Plus, our meeting is usually at this church, but there's something there tonight. I don't know what it is. We're like in the, our meeting is like in the gym activities area. It's huge. We split up into four groups, plus a beginner's group. And so, like, sometimes they use, like, they'll have, like, if they'll, like, if they're having a, what is going on here? What is this traffic that I just got myself into? Sometimes if they're having, like, um, oh, no, 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 Louise. <laughs> what did I just get myself into? Some horrific traffic. Um, you know, like, if it's an election day, they'll have voting at the church and for other things they'll have voting at the church like if it's a Christmas service or whatever so there's a like we sometimes go to this meeting place behind there that's still part of the church but it's like behind so I think that's where it's at tonight and there's like an inside and an outside meeting and Tanya goes we're sitting outside tonight I said okay <laughs> okay Tanya Jane <laughs> She's so funny. I love my meeting nights. It's so crazy to think, you know, that like for 20 plus years, every Tuesday night, like I said, with the exception of when I've been out of town or whatever, you know, that I've been at this meeting. Oh, I see. They got some buddy up here controlling traffic. Why though? I don't understand why. Is something letting out over here at Connor Prairie? Soar to historic heights. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. you can go up in that balloon. I should not probably tell Alex that. Remind me not to come back this way. I don't know why, like, what's going on there. That, so Connor Prairie is the prairie settlement. There's all kinds of parking way out there. People, there's something going on out there right now today. So there's this horrific traffic. Do you see all this? We can't really see it from there, but like, see. Car after car after car after car. 
So I'm reading Lost Girl, The Lost Girls, which is about the women that were abducted for 10 plus years in Ohio. It's a really difficult book to read, I'll tell you. Um, so the live stream for it is this upcoming Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's just a really difficult book to read. Mel, Mel kind of prepared me for it. And she's like, I had to stop it a lot. <coughs> the amount of SA that these women endured as a result of this man, at the hands of this man, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. It has been a really difficult book to read, and I'm really not that far into it. I'm like an hour and a half into this 11 and a half hour book of which I still have 10 hours to go and I said I was going to have it done by tomorrow. Um, I just, no, I, I will say it is an interesting book. It is an interesting read, especially John Glatt, the way, the way that he writes true crime is very interesting. He goes in and kind of tells the backstory and then he gets kind of right into it. And, um, so he tells the background story on this Ariel, Ca Ariel Castro, who was the guy that abducted them. I mean, he gets into it pretty quickly. He tells the backstory of how he came from Puerto Rico and his growing up and how he was impoverished. And then when he came to the United States and he lived in Pennsylvania and then he uh, moved to Ohio and he talked about his wives or his common law wife and then his girlfriend that he's dating, who he had a girlfriend the entire time with these women were like, had been abducted and stuff. I don't know. It's just, <clears throat> and she was like, he was so kind and nice to me and stuff. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And how methodical he was. Like he thought all this through like years before. I actually cannot believe like reading this book like, it's almost kind of, like, on the level, even though he didn't kill them, it's almost kind of on the level of that, that Holmes guy from Chicago. Like, it's really kind of that sadistic. And, um, I mean, it is that sadistic. It's not kind of, it is that sadistic, except he doesn't kill them. Um, this one scene, he causes... The one girl, I think it's Michelle, she's the first one, to have a miscarriage. And then he puts the baby in her arms and asks her if she feels bad. I mean, it's like so sick, you guys. Um, by the way, did you guys see that Dustin Daly is um, doing true crime now? Not really true crime. He and I were texting about it last night. He's doing like missing person cases because that's what he enjoys and stuff like that. I just want to say, I went and watched his video and for any of you that know, Dustin Daly and I have had our own past as far as not getting along and stuff, but that has been long since mended and Dustin and I talk from time to time and um, I would consider Dustin a friend of mine today. We're friendly, you know, we talk and yeah, I would consider him a friend and Nick as well and um, so anyway, I watched his video last night and I just want to say, I was so impressed because I watch a lot of these true crime uh, YouTubers. Dustin really handled it in a way that he really humanized um, this Danica girl and the situation that had happened to her. Plus went in to kind of educate and talk about like bathrooms in Las Vegas at the airport and how they said things like about tra trafficking and things like that. I was really impressed with how he handled the video. If you haven't seen it, go check out Dustin's video. Um, tell him I sent you. <laughs> and, um, but he's going to start doing uh, true crime slash more missing persons is what he told me. And he's really excited of it, and he should be so proud of himself. He did a really nice job in the first video. It was, I mean, he's done others like this in the past, but um, it just was really, really well done. I was super impressed. Because one of the things that, like, Mel and I talk a lot about and the rest of the book club is when we're discussing a book is, and not, don't expect to be seeing no true crime from me, okay? I'm not doing any true crime videos. I, I told him, I said, I don't know how you do it. The research to go back in there is like, he's like, well, not so much with missing persons cases, but he is gonna do like longer videos. But 
when I watch these like Stephanie Harlow and Kendall Ray videos and stuff like that and Bailey Sarian, like the, they have to do some serious research and note taking on it. And I'm like, I don't know about all that. It's like a lot of work. So, um, but anyway, um, you know, we always talk in our book club about the importance of honoring the victim and the importance of humanizing the victim. And you can kind of tell, like, if they, what the writer's intent is by if they do, if they do honor the victim and the victim's family in it, you know? Anyway, I was super impressed with how Dustin, he handled it in the video. More so than I've seen even bigger, um, and, and YouTubers, and not necessarily Stephanie or uh, Kendall. I think they do a nice job of honoring the victims. Kendall's very active on Twitter about um, about like old stories and stuff. You know who else is too? Is Jax Miller from um, the Lori Bible Ash Ashley what was it Freeman case that we read the book about that she wrote? Oh my God, she is so active on Twitter about, like, missing persons cases and true crime and things like that. Which I think is so cool that she's using her platform for that. What is this way out here? Some kind of fast food deal out here. Leo's? Never heard of it. It's like a gas station. Leo's. Eatery and Market. Don't know it. It's so weird driving out here during the day versus driving out here at night. So last night I was gonna watch another drag pageant. That didn't happen. I like, I remember not being able to fall asleep at first, and then like I fell asleep real quick. Well, I was working on some stuff downstairs, and Alex went to bed, because we were like talking, he was upstairs and I was downstairs, and I was on the computer working on some stuff. Oh, I bought more Audible books. I know, I need to stop. Anyway. He, um, so he was upstairs and I was downstairs. Yeah, he was upstairs. I was downstairs and we were talking. And then he goes, okay, I'm going, I'm going to sleep. Come here, um, give me a kiss, good night. And I said, okay, I will in just a second. I said, I'm finishing this up. And, um, and then I worked on that stuff. I thought he'd still be up, like on his phone playing his games. But when I got upstairs, he was asleep. So, and then I went to bed, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I looked at Boo Radley, and I said, Boo Radley, I said, I'm just gonna rest my eyes for just a little bit, and then I'm gonna go vlog. And then I was like, okay, maybe I'll sleep for like an hour or two. I don't know what I think is gonna wake me up in an hour or two. I don't set an alarm hardly ever anymore, unless I know that. The only time I do it anymore is if I know that like, when it's gonna go off, Alex is still gonna be up, like watching a show or looking at TikTok or, you know, playing his game, his township on his phone or something like that. That's the only time that I do it. Like, other than that, like, I don't set my alarm anymore for, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, first of all, because I don't get up. Second of all, because I don't want to wake him up. So, I never really did it for that late. I would do it for, like, 1 o'clock in the morning, you know. But anyway, I don't do that anymore. If I wake up, I wake up. If I don't, I don't. I actually kind of like vlogging, like, as the last thing that I do before I come home and rest or unwind. It's just kind of really cathartically calming for me. It's kind of like a, just a written diary or a spoken diary, you know? And, um, yeah, I really enjoy doing that. Like tonight, if I was smart, I would do it like right after I got done with my meeting and I dropped Tanya off. Because that's like usually, you know, like I'm a rela I'm relaxed and um, I'm in a good mood and I'm not too tired. I'm not too tired that I don't wanna, um, you know, do anything. <clears throat> Like, that's always kind of like that 10.30 time is actually kind of a really good time for me to vlog. I honestly don't know how long I've been vlogging now. I 
think I've been vlogging like 10 minutes when I stopped at the bank. Oh, this isn't where I turn. I, I never, I don't come out here very often. This is Hamilton Town um, Center. And the only thing is one of my good friends, she works over here. One of my good sober JDs. Um, this is like one of the only places that has a Bath and Body Works that's actually outside. So, like you just go in from the entrance. Like this mall is all outside, does that make sense? And I like that. I used to, oh, Spirit Halloween is already up? Oh my God, I'm gonna have to call Melissa and tell her. She probably already knows. She's probably been there 15 times already. I cannot believe it. They can't be open yet. Well, we'll pull through on our way out and see if it's open. Look, this is like a huge spirit Halloween. Look at this. Oh my God. This is really a beautiful mall in here. It's kind of surprising to me if they don't have like different stores. <sighs> Where is Bath and Body Works? There's never any parking spaces in front of it. There's Journeys, there's Zoomies. It's right here. Did I pass it already? I feel like it was right there and it closed. Oh, you are kidding me. It was right next to Zoomies and that stuff. Are you kidding me? I did not drive all the way out here for Bath and Body Works to be closed down. Why did it close down? Oh, Pies and Pines. That's where my husband lived the other night. Ugh, now I have to go into the mall. Well, I'm not going into the mall today, I can tell you that much. I'm gonna go park over here and I'm gonna see what it says about Bath and Body Works. I've got like a minute left and when it stops, I'm also gonna look and see how long I vlogged for, so. I'm gonna start it up again. Can you believe this? I drove all the way out here. I don't have any idea why it closed. Bath and Body Works. I was so excited to get some Halloween candles today. No results found. What does that mean? They all closed down in Indianapolis or something? Noblesville. Okay. Here it is. Okay, I'm back. I have vlogged for like 40 some minutes. Now, I have to tell you that I looked it up and it says it's still here. And it says it's still right where I passed. And I called and it says that they're open, but it said you could stay online to talk to somebody. So I'm gonna go over here again and see if I have lost my mind and if It's not, I don't know. Okay. This three dog bakery is so cute for dogs, dog bakery. But like our dogs cannot handle um, the 
the treats because they don't eat stuff like that. So then it just gives them like really horrible poops. Where is this? It's. Oh, there it is. It moved to the other side of the street. I passed right by it and didn't see it. It was over here and now it's over here. I wonder why they moved across the street. That's silly. <laughs> of course, there's no parking spaces. Here it is. It's right there. Okay. And trick or treat. They got their Halloween things that I can see. So, I'm going to find a parking space. And then... This will be real fun. This is the parking space over here this person is leaving from. Really don't want to walk all this way. So we're going to go by Spirit Halloween first <laughs> and see if Spirit Halloween is open. Oh my God, there's a Hula Hands out here. I didn't, did I know that? Sometimes, do you ever forget like things you knew? Sometimes I think I forget things that I knew. I don't feel like this is maybe open yet. Coming soon. Until then, shop at spirithalloween.com. Ooh, I might have to go on spirithalloween.com and see what their t-shirts say. I really want to get, I was talking to Tani about this the other day. I was like, would you wear a t-shirt that said sober? And she said, yeah, absolutely. Because every once in a while, like, I'll see somebody that has a t-shirt that says, like, sober, or it'll have, like, a recovery saying on it or something. And I said, would you wear that? And she goes, oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, you don't feel like it's a walking billboard, like it's a violation of traditions? And she was like, no, not at all. And she's like, I think it's, you know, being proud of our sobriety and, you know, sharing the message. And so, I was like, okay. So, I was thinking about it, and I got online, and I thought there would be, like, several websites that would have like recovery t-shirts that just say like you can get ones from like Amazon that just or you know that just say like sober or something on them but I was wanting like oh is this a parking space right here please tell me it is I was wanting like no damn it then why did I go down this way oh there is a parking space right there oh god I was wanting like a cuter one than that if that makes sense Please don't take my perfect princess parking space. There's a little dog park over here. Oh, who even knew how cute that is? Gems for dogs, it's called. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. But anyway, I haven't been able to find a website that has like real cute t-shirts, like sobriety t-shirts. So look at this princess parking. I am right around the corner from this place. I'm so happy. Okay, I will be, oh, the battery is dying too. Oh my God. Everything's happening at once. Do I have, oh, please tell me I have another battery in here. I do, so I will be back in two and two. Okay, I'm back. I didn't buy one candle, you guys. I got one of those bags with like the crate things in the bottom of them. This shirt is like, okay. Um, the girls that work in there are always so friendly. And she handed me a little bag and I said, can I actually get a big bag? It's like a crate because I always buy. Oh, look at her. She's wanting my princess parking space. Because, um, I know she's wanting the other princess parking space. Um, I always buy so many candles when I go in there, you know? And I said, Where I see that you have your Halloween ones out, where are your new Halloween candles? And like, this store is big. Like, it's a really nice new store in Hamilton Town Square. Um, it reminds me of kind of like the Castleton store. It's like twice as big inside the Castleton Mall Square. Or Castleton Square Mall store. So I go in there and I'm like, she's like, she points to me where the Halloween ones were, which I'm like, why don't I, I didn't understand why they didn't have their Halloween ones right, right when you walk in the door. But anyway, there's only a couple Halloween ones, and it's like, and don't get me wrong, like I'm not ready for Halloween. I'm not ready for summer to be over and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted, I was excited about buying some Halloween candles. They just came out, you know? I don't know why, but anyway, they had one that was called Vampire's Blood. I don't know what it was supposed to smell like. It didn't smell good. They had another one that was called Ghoul, Ghoul Friend, Friend. I don't know what it was supposed to smell like. It didn't smell good. They had Wicked Apple, which smelled bad to me. Like all of them smelled kind of like, I don't know, there was something off about the candles. And all of the ones that I liked were all like pound cakey kind of candles. And um, 
I think, I mean, I smelled so many candles. Finally, I just like took the bag to her and I said, can you save this bag for somebody else? I said, there's not one candle on here that I want. And she was talking to another one of the girls that worked there. And um, the other girl said something like, I know, or something like that. And I said, oh, you didn't like the Halloween ones either? And she goes, oh no, I like the Halloween ones. And I said, which one did you like? And she said, I really like the Wicked Apple one. And I said, really? I said, it smells kind of like off to me, like a stale apple or something. I said, the pound cake, did I say that to her? I don't know. But anyway, I usually buy like 10 candles in there. I didn't find anything that I liked. The candles smell, some of the candles smell good, but I didn't want to like, the idea of why I was going there today was, to, I mean, we trust, we have enough candles at home, okay? We have enough candles at home. The idea wasn't to go spend $100 just on more candles. The idea was to buy the new Halloween candles, and since I didn't like the Halloween candles, which the other thing was they only had like three or four of the Halloween candles. Like, they didn't have... The other thing is, on top of that is, I didn't like the how they were wrapped you know what i'm talking about like the paper around the glass or whatever it was like i mean it's very halloweeny but I, I just didn't like how it looked i don't know why but anyway so there was my fun day going to bath and body works now i'm gonna go home and um i'm gonna film some videos at home and then get ready for my meeting this evening and yeah that's my day it's my day. <laughs> it is so pretty outside. I should go run up to the pool is what I should do. For an hour. Or for half an hour before I go to my meeting. Sometimes though, like, when I go to the pool, it relaxes me so much that then I don't want to do anything. Like, then I get home and I'm like, just like, oh, I don't want to do anything else today. You know what I mean? Do you ever feel that way? I think I'm gonna really try to listen to quite a bit of this um, book tonight too. Well, the other thing is that I have been downloading a lot of music lately. When I was watching these pageants, I would like download songs from the pageant. And then like, especially like the Whitney Houston, like I've just been listening to some of these songs on repeat. Um, like the song Try It On My Own, I love that song. And I've been listening to that song like over and over and over and over again. There's also a Todrick Hall song that's real funny that I've been listening to a lot. Anyway, how are you guys doing today? Are you guys having a good day? I saw one of my friends on Facebook post yesterday. Um, I hadn't posted on Facebook, you guys. I looked on there yesterday because I finally posted something. I said, Hi, I haven't posted on here since April. How is everyone? <laughs> and the last time I posted was asking for recommendations for landscapers because we couldn't get somebody to landscape our yard. That was in April. That was the last time I posted on Facebook. I have friends of mine that literally post hourly. Tanya reshares memes and gifts and pictures and quotes constantly on the Facebook. She loves Facebook so much. But one of my friends yesterday, he posted a picture, he's a school teacher, of like him um, at the end of his day. And he was like, first day with the kids back in the school. He's like an elementary school teacher. He was like, first day back with the kids in the school. Went well and it was over. And then it said like, if your roommate, spouse, or partner is a school teacher, it, uh, plan to do all the cooking or DoorDash this week because they're going to be worn out or something like that. But, um... So most schools, I think, are back, you know? Now, I know my nephews don't go, I think, like I said, until next week. Still, that seems super early to me, you know? I don't know. Do you guys think it's early? I mean, I feel like when I talk to the parents, like, um, like people at the pool and stuff like that, they're not like it's super early. They're like, well, it's the same as, you know, two years ago. They're going back at the same time. Or they'll say... 
Like, I feel like there's a lot of kids, like, whose parents I talk to in our neighborhood that, like, it's, either, it's split between private and public schools. So there's a lot of kids that go to private schools, there's a lot of kids that go to public schools. A lot of the private school kids get two weeks off at every vacation anyway. Like, they get two weeks off at fall break. They get, like, two or three weeks off at, like, winter break. They get, you know what I mean? Like, two weeks off at spring break, things like that. They get a long summer. So the private school kids are actually in school the least amount of time, it seems like. And then the public school kids, it's split depending on, you know, and since it's a lot of grandparents that are bringing their kids up there, it's like the different township schools. So when I ask, you know, they're always like, well, they go back, you know, the last week of July or they go, I, I feel like the last week of July is super early. But who knows? Oh man. What a beautiful day. Well, listen, I'm gonna get off here and actually listen to a little bit of my audiobook now. So, um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Tuesday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Nobody else has told you this today. I love you. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. And for those that need to hear it, what is it? One more I love you. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.